So when we were in worship, I saw, actually I heard a voice and the voice said, a wounded spirit dries the bones. And I, I didn't know what the Lord was saying, but I started to pray, Lord, heal the wounded spirits. Heal the wounded spirits. And I saw all these hearts, pieces of hearts, broken hearts. And all the hearts came together and they were all, they all became, they all were healed. They all became a whole heart. The pieces of the heart came together and the halves, some of the hearts were in halves and they joined back together and they were pink. And, and as they kept praying, they just, they turned red and they got larger. And the heart started to beat. I could hear this, like a humming sound coming out of the hearts. And then I heard the kaboom, kaboom, kaboom of a heart. And then I started to hear those hearts singing. And the hearts were singing, I have loved you. The hearts were singing, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. That's powerful. Thank you, Jesus. I sense the same thing that God was doing healing. Even those on, on YouTube, those on Zoom have been touched. Anyone else? You want to come quickly, church? Yeah, just during worship, I kept seeing a picture of Jesus and the crown of thorns and just the blood dripping down from the crown of thorns. And then I saw it again as you were praying. It was like a zoomed in image, zoomed in image of the crown of thorns and just the blood pouring down. Wow. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. I was I was beholding it when you guys were worshiping God. Wasn't the worship fantastic? You know, God, God is just lifting this church up into another level. We are touching heaven and changing earth in this place. Okay. Anyone else quickly? Anyone on Zoom, speak now or forever. Hold your peace. I'll bring, the, I'll bring the mic over. You're in the worship. I just saw Jesus standing in front of me. And he reached out his hand to put around me, to wrap his arms around me, and I could just feel his presence, like his love, enveloping every part of me. Oh, and as I sort of, I would sort of step back a little bit, but then he kept putting his hand out to me to draw, to draw me back to his side. Hallelujah. And then he was sort of looking as I was there, and then I saw. I sort of moved back again. He, kept, he just kept, he kept, kept doing Hallelujah. it. He just kept putting his hand to draw me to his side like a mother or draw her, her little baby or little toddler next to him. So that's what I'm feeling. But the love, his love's just drawing us, drawing us to his side. And it's a beautiful presence and I couldn't get out of it and I just wanted to stay in his love and stay there right next to him as he had his arm around me and filling me with his love because his love thank you Jesus thank you Lord Amen. amen thank you Lord she's got a worshiper's heart and God will meet that amen Thank you, Lord Jesus. Continue, uh, Jody. God is touching you and doing a mighty work. He's also doing, even with that, He's doing a deep healing that we don't, you don't even have to know because we are born with a lot of stuff in our lives, but God absorbs them by His love. Amen. Yeah, I, um, it's kind of like the theme of this morning, just that healing. And I, I saw um, burdens, huge burdens. And uh, it's like all of us has taken the burdens of our parents Mm. if they were fighting or struggling, whatever was mm. in that Amen. household yes. as children. And unknowingly, that burden, it's like this huge stone. And I just saw the Lord lifting, lifting the burden, lifting that responsibility. Oh, hallelujah. And, uh, mm. Which is His and doesn't mm. belong to us. And whether we realise it or not, He was doing it today. And, hallelujah. Amen. And uh, just the second thing, I um, there's a scripture in the Old Testament and, 
and it says, you know, basically, it's we are, we are blessed, you know, the nation of Israel, and cannot be cursed. And um, and unknowingly, sometimes when things are not going our way, and things get broken or whatever, and unknowingly we listen to a voice in our heart that we kind of say to ourselves, "I feel cursed. I think I'm cursed." And I just saw the Lord removing that, removing those that hurt, that pain, that we we're actually blessed, but we're walking down downtrodden and I just saw the Lord removing that away wow. from us. Praise Amen. God. Praise God. Don't don't go away. Just, just one minute. <laughs> you got something, Maureen? Oh, you want to sit down there till Maureen finish? But but just uh, just to keep it, uh, you know what Julie Julie brought and and Julie and Judy. Both Jays, Jesus, Amen. They love Jesus. And exactly what what uh, <laughs> Um, Bill, Bill said as well, it's, can you see what the Lord is doing, church? He's healing all the broken hearts. And we think that we are born with a, a silver spoon in our mouth and our mummies were so pious and holy and our daddies were pious and holy and the blood was never contaminated. You know, I'm just joking around now, okay? You've got to know what I'm talking about. You know, Jesus died for sinners, you know, and we have downloaded contaminated stuff that is not even our mommy and daddy's fault. So you don't blame them. You love them. You obey them. You honor them till you, for the rest of your life. You honor your parents. Other life will not go well with you. But this thing that Bill shared today is, is exactly what God has been doing in this church. He's healing all those scars that have been there from your bloodline. Those scars and the hearts that was what Julie shared and Bill shared, they all come together. He's healing that so that the royal blood will replace those areas and bring total restoration in every area of your life. Just because you're going to church and you do all the things and the gifts operate, you can be, gifts will operate without repentance. You can build mega churches, you can do it because the gifts will operate without repentance. But God is looking at your heart this morning. Just open up your heart and like these people here, just let the Lord heal the brokenness that is that you have pushed down and put lids on it and some of you have put some concrete blocks on it. But God is good at lifting those concrete blocks because it's a broken and a contrite heart that he will not despise. Okay, Maureen. Mm. Amen. Um, I was getting, it is well with my soul. Mm. It is well with my soul, and just one line stands out, they Satan may buffet us, it is well with my soul. Mm. Amen. Just hang on to that, it is well with my soul. Don't listen to the lies of the enemy because it is well with my soul. You are his child. You've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, and it is well. Amen. 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 It's already done on Calvary. Yes. Anyone else? Yes, sir. One more. <laughs> um, that was beautiful worship. In that um, new wine song, I got like a wow. Pull the mic close. You'll Just see. in the in the crushing, in the pressing, you are making new wine. In this soil, I now surrender. You are making new ground. What I got from that was the the break, the crushing. It's, it's painful, but um, <laughs> it's so painful. But it's part of the he's deal. He's making right? <laughs> wine like all the qualities he's purposed us to have is, is the new wine. All the Amen. purpose, all the strengths mm. is the new wine. Amen. And that's what came to me. Bless you. That, Stay strong. That, that song, that song spoke to me as well. You know, he's making new wine out of me. Oh, wow. It's just awesome, church. No contaminated, spoiled vine, you know, but new vine out of me. It's going to pour out of you. People are going to chase under that. Come taste and see that the Lord is good. Amen. Yes, Bill, you want a couple of words for a couple of people, please, and, and then we'll take communion. Um, Lauren? Is it Lauren? Who is that? Lauren? Yeah, you. <laughs> um. I see this picture and um, which is kind of like what it is this morning. Just say you've got a number and someone calls, like kind of like bingo, and they call it out. 
and you're holding that number and someone bumps you and says, you've got it, you've got it. And um, I'm just going to share some things that God has shown to me and uh, you, you have a calling on your life from God and um, this is what I see before you and I see um, it's almost like you're studying and I see all these books and you're reading everything and you're trying to learn about where is God, what does he look like, where is this kingdom and I see all these books and everything you're doing and then I see you further in the future and you're teaching and I see you in a classroom and it's like you are teaching about the kingdom and you're explaining about the kingdom and then I see you as an old lady and you are before the Lord grateful and thankful to him that he granted you that ability to teach about his kingdom. So um, that's the teaching of the Lord. Amen. Makes me cry. I mean, man, wow. Wow, wow. Thank you, Jesus. I've sat on that for about three weeks. You were here about three weeks ago and God showed me. And for the last three weeks, God says, this is who she is. This is the calling. And there's going to be ups and downs in life. That's for all of us. We have a calling and clunkiness. We fall and Welcome all that. come to life. But that's what I see and that's what it is. But I could see the gratefulness, the privilege to be able to teach about the kingdom. And when I was meditating, it was almost my spirit was even being drawn to wanting to hear what you have to say about the kingdom in the future. Amen. Wow. Praise God. And just the lady beside you, your friend, um, I don't know, Janelle, um, I, I see you, it's, it's like a slow baptism and you're just going into the immersion into the water, but it, it is just a very, very slow immersion and it, it's like... If you ever want to do something just right, it is a slow process, not a quick immersion. And I just saw it in the spirit, and that's what I saw for you. Amen. And uh, for Shannon, um, God's about to stretch you a little bit. And the wonderful thing with God's... <laughs> Don't laugh, your turn may be next. <laughs> Yeah, blessed are you. <laughs> but the beauty with God's stretching, and God showed me this morning, if we try and stretch someone, we usually hurt them. But when God stretches, it's just beautiful, and it doesn't hurt and it doesn't damage. And he's instructing and teaching you and leading you to hear his voice, to just to discern the spirit, the touch and the feel. And he's starting with your heart. So you're starting to recognise what's happening in your heart. And then his word, I saw it coming to separate that which is soul and that which is spirit. And I just see like this, this um, hearing tune to your ear that you will hear and you will know his voice. So that's what's happening in your life at the moment. Amen. It's, it's a how. One more, Bill. <laughs> Amen. Um, for Devash, I just got that word... Um, unusual faith, unusual faith. And we know that you're a man of faith and God's called you in that. And I'm just reminded of some of the men of old. They, they never asked for things, they never sought. They just, in their heart, they spoke to the one who can provide. And oh, Lord has, has brought you through Lord, many situations amen. and those situations are to allow your faith to grow, to trust that he proves his hand in you. So you will be a man of unusual faith. Wow, um, wow, thank you. Thank you, Lord. You want to stand up? We'll take communion, please. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Wow, isn't that awesome, church? Father, we just thank you, Father God. Lord, you make new wine, Lord, out of every one of us today, Lord, as we come, Lord, and remember the sacrifice. We do this in remembrance, Lord, that you went through so much pain, so much grief, Lord, so much sorrow, Lord God. But you loved us so much, Lord. And you suffered. You were mocked marred beyond human recognition, Lord, because you loved every one of us. Lord, we receive that love today, Lord, as we behold you today, Lord God, and hold the bread, Lord. You are the bread of life, and you are the bread of hope today, Lord. As we together, Lord God, Lord, that you do a miracle deep, deep inside of us, Lord. Lord, that we'll knit our hearts together, Lord God, and we'll see your glory being displayed from this moment on. Let us come together in agreement in Jesus' name.
thank you, Jesus, for your precious blood. Right now, Lord, we do this in remembrance, Lord, what you've done on Calvary, on the way to Calvary, Lord, at the whipping post. You took it all on your broken body, Lord, because you loved us. You loved us first, Lord. Touch our lives today, Lord. Let that cleansing of your blood, removing the guilt, the stain, the pain, everything, Lord, that have happened yesterday, last week, last month, 10 years ago, Lord, that we will let it all go, Lord, and let your glory fill the void, Lord, in our lives that will be totally, completely devoted to you, Lord. As we drink together, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> wow. Isn't God good, church? I said, isn't God good? Amen. Amen. Wow. I, I do believe there are a lot of people who have been touched and God has revealed it. Just don't be fearful, church, to step forward and share something that God has revealed it to you. It's important that you step forward. You're, you're robbing yourself from something and you're robbing others as well. Amen. Where is Charlene? Is she out there somewhere? I, I sense you had something, Charlene. Don't forget the prayer meetings. I was right, wasn't I, Charlene? <laughs> what do you say? <laughs> Not always, but most of the time. <laughs> um, I saw when they were singing that song... The wine, wine one, yeah. <laughs> I saw like the church in a wine cup and we're just going with the flow of the Lord, but I didn't see wine. I saw the blood of Jesus and it was just, it was adding and he was adding and he's, it's about to overflow. Wow. And it was a beautiful picture. I saw something else and I can't remember that. Oh, I saw a woman at the feet of Jesus and she had a backpack on Hold your mic. and she was crying and she was saying, God, I don't have enough. I don't have enough. Here is everything that I have. And she was pulling out plastic bottles and just little things. And then I saw a whole trail of just multiplication because she gave everything to the Lord. Wow. 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 Wow, wow, wow. Yeah, I didn't hear that. I think it's a part of her message as well. Charlene, you're really in tune with the Holy Ghost. Yes, I, I, I knew you had something as well. Um, that's my... Um, my vision goes with um, Charlotte's. Um, I saw a vision of straight away five loaves and two fishes and uh, multiplication and... Yeah, and then I saw a vision of the veil being ripped, torn, and how powerful it is to come into the Holy of Holies. Hallelujah. Um, all of us can come into the Holy of Holies. Mm. That's a powerful place. Thank you. That's what I saw. Praise God. You got something too, Jen? <laughs> oh, before Yara comes, yeah. Uh, one more, yeah. Just, um, you don't forget the prayer meetings. Try and try and getting there for the transformation meeting because as I mentioned every week, people are being transformed. And when you come into the tri meeting, some of you can't because you have workplaces or you just don't want to be there or whatever. Um, but try and throw yourself into it even for five minutes, church, because you're telling God that I'm in line with what you wrote in the Bible. That's a good one. Amen. Because you need the body of Christ. You can't do it alone, church. You can't. I need the body of Christ. The things that Yara and I go through, if not for the body of Christ, we would have been burnt. There's so many pastors. You can't, you can't run a church for 25 years and still survive. Because there's so many pastors that have given up and pastors that have ended up in mental homes. And, uh, because you get all different kinds of characters and people who have been through and cultures. And uh, they know how to bite you and sheep bite hard. Some don't let go. I mean, they feel good or something. I don't know. But because of our continuous praying God and seeking God, He heals our hearts and we need it every day. Give us this day, day, not yesterday. Give us this day our daily bread. You need the daily bread. He is the bread of hope and He is the bread of life. 
Okay, thanks, Jen. Um, well, I didn't know what it meant until Lee got up, but I saw this like cracking and it was so loud. And as like it was cracking, I heard like this really loud, like thundering sound. And it was just like this breaking of like white and black, but like there was no comparison and it was just really, really loud. And then when Lee said like the veil is torn, that was like when the penny dropped, but it was so loud, like, yeah. Wow. That's, that's a lot of deliverance and healing taking place because there are people on YouTube and everywhere. You got something, Bob? You want to pray? You want to pray? Oh, we'll collect the tithes and offerings. Uh, be ready to give. And those who uh, are supporting us and putting their tithes um, in straight into the bank, we appreciate everything you guys do. You know your names and we love you guys so much. You, you are carrying this place, you know. Everything has to be purchased. They don't even uh, give toilet paper for nothing in the shopping center because they are a Christian, amen? So <laughs> every dollar that you give is being spent for the building of God's kingdom and particularly what we are doing, healing the brokenhearted. Okay, Bob, you want to pray, please? Uh, Father God, I thank you that Everyone hearing my voice at the moment is blessed coming Amen. in, blessed going out. Their barns are overflowing. Hallelujah. Their body is healed in every cell and fibre. Mm -hmm. And as I walk around collecting the tithes with Janet, just see us being burdened with the abundance that goes into these bags. <laughs> <laughs> and it mightn't go in there spiritually today, but it goes electronically into the bank, so we still feel the burden because these bags are overflowing. Amen. Oh, wow. Never heard anything like that in my life before. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Okay, love, and you're ready. Amen. Thanks again, every guy. Thanks a million. Just noticed Jill, my twin's ringing, and she just left a message to say that Carla's taken Ethan to hospital now. He's vomiting out some brown. I don't know if it's blood. I'm not sure. Oh, okay. Well. Thank you. You want to stand up? We we'll pray for Warren and anyone else who needs a miracle right now. Just lay your hands. If you if you need a miracle, don't uh, don't pray, please, because you can't receive and give at the same time. Just lay hands on that body part, on your head, your stomach area, wherever it is, legs, toes. Hallelujah! Don't hurt your back when you're touching your toes. Okay. Just where it is, just lay your hands right now. Lord, we lift up Warren and Sue and David Page, Lord, and Sylvia and everyone that we have been praying for, Lord. We lift them up right now, Lord. Those listening on YouTube, Lord, that there is no distance in prayer, that you send forth your word and heal them. Just pray in the Holy Ghost. Lord, we come in agreement, Lord, and we release your dunamis power. Lord, we break that spirit of death, Lord, over little Ethan, Lord God. We break the fear and the death. We smash it and break it. Shibara, that's it. Just sima, takita, barandana, that are left right now. That spirit of death that left, that negative report, that fear and terror. Lord, we command it to go right now, that negative report. And we speak life into every bodily organ. We command you in the name of Jesus right now. You will live. You will live. You will live and not die to declare the works of the Lord in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, as we join our faith together, Lord, that electrifying power, dunamis, resurrection power is moving right now. Some of you are being touched right now like lightning has hit you right now. That's the that's power of God moving right through your body. Electric power, dunamis power, resurrection power. Sima takina takala rabosombrondia. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. That's reminded me. Please be seated. I'll just share it before Yara comes. It reminded me years and years. I was a brand new Christian, though, by the way. I was, must have been a safe for about a few months or probably a couple of years. I can't remember. And this lady came to me and she said that everyone prayed, pastors prayed, churches prayed for her. We were at a prayer meeting for her to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost to pray in tongues. So in my little knowledge of Jesus, you know, because I, I knew God showed me about the blood and the cross and, and the redeeming power of the cross. So I told her, and there was another guy there who has been uh, 40 years in the Christian, and I'm a baby Christian, and he's staring at me, and I ignored him totally. 
Um, and um, I was, must, have, must have been really arrogant, you know. <laughs> you know, you get those arrogant ways that you bring into the kingdom of God. But anyway, I started praying for her. And I told her, I said, look, look to the blood of Jesus and look to the cross. Jesus bleeding on the cross. And uh, open up your tongue. Don't pray in your language or any other language. Just, um, just pray. Just follow me and just pray in the Holy Ghost. Church, I had to stand back. It was electricity. Like, like I felt the power, like electric power flowing right into my hands and into that lady. She didn't pray in tongues and not just one or two syllables. She just sang in the Holy Ghost for the first time in her life, church. She sang melodies from heaven. It was that electric power that is inside of you. Church, you just imagine the power of Jesus that entered into the dead body, you know, that Jesus entered in, the resurrection power, and you got it inside of you. When you lay hands, cancers should melt, church. If you believe what you got inside of you, you should be the most blessed and a person in the entire world, in every area of your life. That's spiritually, physically, emotionally, because of what Calvary has done. Not because of what you have done. And he didn't just die for you, but he rose again, Jay. He rose again for you and God has got great things for you. He's, he's going to bring you out. You're going to be a totally transformed man. You're going to change from one to the other. And people are going to say, is this the Jay that I know? And you got the name Jay, church. I mean, yeah. hallelujah. Jesus is with you and he's going to deliver you. And set you free. Okay. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Wow. Wasn't the praise and worship just awesome this morning? Amen. Hallelujah. God is in the house, isn't he? God is in the house. What an amazing God we serve. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Thank you, Lord. You're just an amazing God. We just can never give you enough thanks and praise and worship unto you for what you've done and what you're going to do. Hallelujah. Father God, I thank you that by your spirit, you're going to touch different ones this morning. You're going to speak to us through your word. We thank you, Lord, that your word, hallelujah, your word, you put your word above your name this morning and we worship you and we adore you. You're an amazing God. You're an amazing God. We can never thank you enough for what you are doing in this hour. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. Amen. When uh, Bill gave... Devash, that word about um, he's got a different faith. I thought about the word um, audacious faith. Huh. Audacious oh. faith. Oh. Hallelujah. Like Joshua would say, son, stand still. Yeah. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. A bold faith I seen. A bold faith. Glory to the Lord. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We've got to be bold, don't we? We've got to be strong for the Lord thy God is with us. Amen. I've entitled this message, A Heart of Worship. A Heart of Worship. Luke 9, 12, it says, Late in the afternoon, the 12 came to him and said, Send the crowd away so that they can go to the surrounding villages and countryside and find food and lodging because we are in a remote place here. He replied, You give them something to eat. They answered, We have only five loaves of bread and two fish. Unless we go and buy food for all this crowd, about 5,000 men were there. But he said to his disciples, have them sit down in groups of about 50 each. And the disciples did so. And everyone sat down, taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven. He gave thanks and broke them. Then he gave them to the disciples to distribute to the people. They all ate and were satisfied. And the disciples picked up. 12 basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. Hallelujah. You know, we're living in a time when there's a lot of challenges. There's a lot of opposition around about us. <clears throat> there's a lot of things happening. And the thing is not to lose our passion, not to lose our fire. Hallelujah. <laughs> you know, and, and it's like, you know, and sometimes we think, sometimes we think, well, the religious leaders are the ones with the problems. But, you know, we, we look at the disciples, the disciples, they're the ones telling Jesus when he's telling them um, 
to give them something to eat. They want to send these people away. And it's easy to send them away, isn't it? Tell them to go and buy something for themselves. Jesus said, no, you feed them. You feed them. You be the one to give them something. And we're living in a time and hour when it's easy to say, yes, we'll send them away. Send them away. Why bother? So we've got to be looking at our hearts in this hour, don't we? <clears throat> that when Jesus tells us something, we've got to do it. We've got to do it. There's a lot of hungry people around. There's a lot of thirsty people around. There's a lot of broken people around. And you and I are the answer. We're the answer. Right now, you know somebody that needs your help. You need somebody that needs your hand. You need somebody. Somebody is near you that needs the word that you've got in your heart. Whatever it is. You know, and I think about uh, blessing someone, a heart of worship, a heart of worship unto God. It's not about us anymore, is it? We've been bought with the highest price. Jesus paid the price on the cross for each one of us. And we don't belong to ourselves. Like Paul the Apostle said, it's no longer I that liveth, but it's Christ that liveth in me. Glory to the Lord. And, and I'm thinking about, you know, if the, if, if the little boy that the, the Gospels talk about, if he didn't release his loaves and fishes, there would not be a multiplication. The people wouldn't have been able to be fed. And sometimes we think, well, I haven't got much. I've only got a little. Well, I don't think five loaves and two fish is too much. It's too little to give. But Jesus multiplies, multiplies. So when we release something, that gets multiplied. I loved your message, Bob. <laughs> Hallelujah. <clears throat> and as we give the little that we've got, there's a multiplication, an expansion. And what you can't do, God can do. Amen. We just have to release that. Release it. When we release it, then something begins to take place. Something begins to happen. Someone's going to be fed. Someone's going to be touched. Someone's going to be changed. Someone's going to be delivered. Glory. And it's releasing that. Jesus said, you give them something to eat. And we're living in a time when there's so many needy people around about us. Christmas is coming. So many people. And I'm just thinking about a word that comes to me now. It's a word for somebody. And Jesus spoke to Martha and said, Martha, Martha, you are upset and worried about many things, but there is one thing that is needed. And Mary chose the better part, the part that which would not be taken away from her. So there's somebody, you're upset and worried about many things. Like I see a big list for some people, a big list. But Jesus gives you the answer. And when he calls Martha twice, you better pay attention. Upset and worried about many things. So we need to release what God has given us. Because if we tend to withhold, that comes to poverty, doesn't it? Glory to the Lord. In June, I thought about uh, Dorcas this morning for you. And there's so many good things about Dorcas. But I wrote down here that Dorcas abounded in good deeds and gifts of mercy. Wow. That's for you, June. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to the Lord. <clears throat> and Bill mentioned about the word this morning, about the burdens of households, the burdens. And uh, in Matthew 15, 22, it says, And behold, a woman who was a Canaanite from that district came out and with a loud, troublesome Urgent cry begged, have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is miserably and distressingly and cruel, cruelly possessed by a demon. But he did not answer her a word. And his disciples came and implored him saying, send her away for she's crying out after us. And I'm thinking about the disciples again. The disciples would say, send her away, send them away. Send her away. And it's like the uh, disciples, uh, when Jesus wanted them to feed the people, uh, they said, let them go and buy something. And it's easy to say that. And, and in this instant, also the disciples, 
said, send her away. This is a Canaanite woman. She has got a daughter that is demon possessed and she's crying out for a miracle. I don't know who you have at home, who you love so much that needs a deliverance, that needs a miracle, that needs divine intervention. But Jesus answered this Canaanite woman. Her prayer is short. And you know, and Jesus did not answer her a word. And his disciples came and implored him, saying, Send her away, for she is crying out after us. And he answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and kneeling, worshipped him, and kept praying, Lord, help me. And he answered, It is not right, proper, becoming or fair to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. She said, Yes, Lord. Yet even the little pups, the little whelps eat the crumbs that fall from their young master's table. Then Jesus answered her, O woman, great is your faith. Be it done for you as you wish. And her daughter was cured from that moment. This was a distressing situation. A loved one at home. She didn't have to bring her to the church. She didn't have to bring her to Jesus. She came to Jesus with the problem. She was troublesome. She said, my daughter is miserably and distressingly and cruelly possessed by a demon. She needed divine intervention. She needed the help of Jesus to come into that area to answer her. And you know, it's amazing that when she began to cry out to Jesus... He did not answer her a word. And isn't that sometimes when you and I begin to cry out, there's no answer. The heavens feel like brass. It's like time of silence. God, are you there? Are you hearing me? Well, this did not put this woman off. She was there to get her miracle. She wasn't leaving She wasn't going to be put off by these disciples that wanted to get rid of her. Her prayer was short. Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. Have mercy on me. She didn't pray a long prayer. It was just a short prayer. And she came kneeling, worshipped him and kept praying, Lord, help me. Lord, help me. I don't know who you've got at home or I don't know who in the family needs a miracle. I don't know who is demon possessed. I don't know who who is in a situation that they can't help themselves. But I'm talking to somebody this morning. There was a woman. It doesn't say she came with a husband. It just says she came herself to Jesus. You're going to be determined. You're going to be tenacious. Because Jesus mightn't speak a word when you first come. And the disciples want you out. They want to get rid of you. So you're going to make sure that you're determined you are going to get your miracle. That your daughter is going to be healed. Whatever it is, your family member. Or you need a miracle yourself. We've got to press in there. We've got to push in there. Because the devil doesn't want you to get your breakthrough. Have you noticed that? We've got to be tenacious, passionate. I'm going to touch Jesus. I'm going to get my miracle. My family is going to be delivered. We're going to have a financial breakthrough. Bodies are going to be healed. Minds are going to sit upright. And I just love the determination in this woman. Don't forget there would have been hurdles, obstacles of discouragement. But this didn't stop her. She just kept on pressing in there to Jesus. Help me, help me, help me, help me, Jesus. Geraldine, I just see there's an area in your life and it's like there's religious spirits around about you. And there's obstacles before you. And I just hear you calling out to Jesus. He's going to hear those prayers and you're going to have a breakthrough. 
You're going to have a breakthrough in family. I just see family, the walls, walls that have been there, religious walls, religious devils. They're going to bow their knee. Hallelujah. They're going to bow their knee to the God that's in you. Glory to the Lord. Hallelujah. Just like Ruth said to Naomi, your God is going to be my God. Your people are going to be my people. And where you go, I will go. Mighty God. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lord. This was a distressing situation that brought her to Jesus. You notice this, there's some things that we go through. No one else can help us but Jesus. But Jesus. But Jesus. Sometimes we're running here, we're running there, we're on the phone, we're, we're posting emails, we're running for this appointment, we're going for this conference. And it hasn't helped us. Jesus. One way, Jesus, hallelujah. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. Glory to the Lord. He's working, he's working, hallelujah. The mother's faith prevailed for her daughter. Though she was at a distance, Jesus spoke and it was done. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Speak but the word of my servant shall be healed. Amen. Simple as that. Simple as that. And I just love that. Jesus answered, Oh woman, great is your faith. Be it done for you as you wish. And her daughter was cured from that moment. Wow. No one else could help but Jesus. No one else. He sent his word and he healed her and he delivered her from her destruction. (laughs) Glory, glory. Glory to the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, mighty, mighty God. Praise the Lord. I just love this scripture. It's in Luke chapter 7. We'll start off with verse 37. And behold, a woman of the town who was an especially wicked sinner When she learnt that he was reclining at the table in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster flask of ointment perfume. And standing behind him at his feet weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears and she wiped them with her hair. Now, this was a wicked sinner. She comes in. She's bold. She don't care what man's there. She just comes in. And standing behind Jesus at his feet, weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears. And she wiped them with her hair of her head and kissed his feet affectionately and anointed them with the ointment perfume. You've got to know that in those days, they used to walk a lot and they wore sandals and there was a lot of animal droppings on the way. So you couldn't enter anyone's house with your sandals. You've got to take them off and have your feet washed. And a woman's hair is her glory. And so the woman, she wipes Jesus' feet with her hair. With her hair, she wipes his feet with her glory, with her glory. Now, when the Pharisee who had invited him saw it, he said to himself, if this man was a prophet, he would surely know who and what sort of a woman this is who is touching him. For she is is a notorious sinner, a social outcast. Devoted to sin. And Jesus replying said to him, Simon, I have something to say to you. And he answered, Teachers, say it. A certain leader of money at interest, a certain lender of money at interest had two debitors. One owed him 500 denarii and the other 50. When they had no means of paying, He freely forgave them both. 
Now, which of them will love him more? Simon answered, the one I take it for whom he forgave and cancelled more. And Jesus said to him, you have decided correctly. Then turning toward the woman, he said to Simon, do you see this woman? When I came into your house, you gave me no water for my feet, but she has wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You gave me no kiss, but she from the moment I came in has not ceased intermittently to kiss my feet tenderly and caressingly. You did not anoint my head with cheap, ordinary oil, but she has anointed my feet with costly, rare perfume. Therefore, I tell you, her sins, many as they are, are forgiven her because she has loved much. But he who is forgiven little, loves little. And he said to her, your sins are forgiven. But Jesus said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go enter into peace in freedom from all the distresses that are experienced as a result of sin. I just love that one woman that wasn't going to be put aside because there was men in the room. She knew what she was going to do. She walked into that room. Jesus was in there. She had her eyes on Jesus. See, we're going to be so focused because there will be someone in the room that will rob you of your peace and your joy. There will be someone in the room that will steal that passion that you have in your heart for Jesus. There will be someone in the room that will have an intimidating spirit that will stop you in your tracks. So you have to be determined. I'm going to come up to Jesus. I'm going to make a difference. I'm going to break my alabaster box and pour out. (laughs) He's worthy of the highest praise. He is worthy of the highest praise. Pour it all out. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lord, the lover of her soul. She demonstrated that he is worthy of it all. He's worthy of it all. She didn't hold back an act of worship. Hallelujah just didn't remain in the house, the act of worship. And she would have been smelling with the fragrance that she poured on Jesus. Hallelujah. Not only was Jesus touched and smelling with the perfume, aroma from the alabaster box, but this woman would have left smelling, hallelujah, with the aroma, with the perfume. Glory to the Lord. Hallelujah. And I just love in Matthew 26, 7, this is um, <clears throat> another version. It says, A woman came up to him with an alabaster flask of very precious perfume and she poured it on his head as he was reclining at table. And when the disciples saw it, they were indignant. She upset a few people. <clears throat> And it's the disciples in the house. Sometimes your audacious act can upset the apple cart in the house of God. You've got to make sure that you're passionate, that you're not going to be put off by people's faces. Hallelujah. I remember many, many years ago I was preaching and there was a woman in the service And did she have a religious spirit? She started to hum when I was preaching. And she started to look up at the ceiling and she continued humming. Well, I just kept on preaching. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. So you've got to be determined, hallelujah, because the devil wants to silence you. He doesn't want you to take that lid off the alabaster box and pour it out till there's nothing left in there. Pour it out, pour it out, whatever it is. Hallelujah. The disciples, the disciples, they saw it as waste. Family can look at you and say, waste. Going to church again? You went last week. (laughs) What? And you're going tonight again. (laughs) What? And you put money in Bob's bag. (laughs) And you 
you're fasting as well. The Passion Translation said that they were critical of this woman. You know, critical spirit will bring barrenness. Critical. When we see somebody having an act of worship to the living God, we can become critical. And critical, if we are, will bring barrenness. Act of worship. Act of worship. We need to be passionate. Don't stop. Don't let somebody stop your act of worship. These disciples... We're indignant. The word indignation means anger, a form of anger triggered by unjust circumstances. What a waste. This money can be given to the poor. And Jesus goes on to say, fully aware of this, when they're talking about that this this perfume might have been sold for a large sum and the money given to the poor. But Jesus, fully aware of this, said to them, why do you bother the woman? She has done a noble, praiseworthy and beautiful thing to me. For you always have the poor among you, but you will not always have me. In pouring this perfume on my body, she has done something to prepare me for my burial. Truly, I tell you, wherever this good news, the gospel is preached in the whole world, what this woman has done will be told also in memory of her. Hallelujah. This act of worship just didn't stay in the house. Amen. Generation after generation is reading about this woman, about her act of worship, that she poured out that alabaster box and didn't withhold anything. Hallelujah. You never know what you do can, can, can go on for, from generation to generation. Hallelujah. Something that you do, act of worship, be remembered, comes up as a memorial before the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lord. And I just love it. You always have some critics, don't you? When you're doing something for Jesus, they're going to say those crazy holy rollers, there they are again. (laughs) They're at it again. They're singing again. They're worshipping again. They're prophesying again. Here they go again on a roll. But you've got to ignore. You know, there's some voices that we have just got to ignore. We can't listen to every voice because it'll take us down the wrong path. We need to be passionate. I love this about this woman. Hallelujah. She didn't care about the men's faces. She just came in. She was on a mission. Hallelujah. Took the lid off that alabaster box and poured it all out. Expensive perfume. Didn't think, well, I'll keep some for another day. I'll keep some for the next man that comes along. Poured it all out. He is worthy of it all. He is worthy of it all. I love a song that Matt Redman sings, The Heart of Worship, longing just to bring something that's of worth that will bless your heart. Longing just to bring something that's of worth that will bless your heart. And didn't this woman do that for Jesus? Brought something that would bless his heart. Hallelujah. Longing just to bring something that's of worth that will bless his heart. Hallelujah. Pouring it all out. Poured poured the precious perfume. King of endless worth. King of endless worth. Amen. Hallelujah. We can never outgive God. We can never give Him enough. Hallelujah. Amen. Pour it out. Pour your love out. Pour your adoration. Pour your worship. Pour your praise unto Him. Hallelujah. He's worthy of it all. Amen. I love that about the woman. She didn't miss her prophetic moment. She sees that moment. See, you and I can be facing a prophetic moment, a chorus moment, and we can miss it. We can miss it. And then somebody else gets there and it's like, I knew I should have done that. I knew I should have said that. Hallelujah. You know, sometimes you've got things on your heart and somebody else says it. And you're thinking, I had the same thing. And I didn't give it out. I didn't say it. 
So we've got to pour it out. We've got to give it out. Amen. Give it out. I'm thinking about because it's, it's Christmas is coming. Random acts of worship, giving. What about when you go shopping to the supermarket and there's a, a lady there with, with little tiny kids and, and you know she looks poor and ragged? How about paying for her groceries at the checkout? Yeah. Random acts. What about someone getting petrol and they're counting their dollars or trying to find a couple of dollars under the seat? Well, two dollars will get you nowhere this day for fuel. What about saying, mate, I'm going to pay for your fuel. Make my day. <laughs> Random acts of worship. Down the checkout. I remember I got some goodies in a packet and there was this lady with these kids and I went up to her and I gave it. Just give it. To give it. Give it. You might have a few dollars. Give what you got and trust God to multiply. Amen. Multiply. Somebody in the supermarket that's poor and needy, that's looking for, for some bargain because I haven't got enough money. Go without that coffee. Go without that piece of cake at the coffee place. <laughs> Random acts of worship. <laughs> What was that again, Jen? <laughs> what about that forex? <laughs> that forex. Go without that forex. Go without that Bundy rum, if that's what you call it. I don't know. <laughs> Random acts of worship. There's so many people out there. What about the homeless? The homeless. Food, clothes, presents, chocolates, whatever it is. And random acts of worship. Think this week, Lord, I want to bless somebody out in the marketplace. I want to bless somebody. There's some woman there. There's some poor, lonely, lonely, lonely son out there. They need a blessing. They need to know that they're loved, that they're loved, that the church loves them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We need to do that more often. Be a blessing. Be a blessing. Hallelujah. You know, I just absolutely love <clears throat> what Tommy Tenney says in his God Chasers book. It's the one with the green um, writing on it because he's got a few of them. <clears throat> he said, Mary had to get to the point where her passion made her say, I don't care who sees me do this, even if you have to dismantle your glory right in front of a room full of disdaining disciples. God doesn't need your religious service. He wants your worship that comes from humility. And he goes on to say, we like the anointed. He likes the anointers. These are people of his face and feet, oil pourers, tea washers, humble lovers of him, more than lovers of his things. You know, I think about when Ainsley was a new Christian and, and he said that God spoke to him. God spoke to him and said, you only come to me when you want something. You only come to me when you want something. I feel I'm speaking to somebody this morning. You only come to God when you want something. It's getting a bit quiet here. <laughs> and so we're going to search our hearts. Do I only come before the Lord when it's a desperate situation? Do I only come to Him when I want something? And we know that if we have a friend and they only come to us when they want something, we know that kind of a friendship, don't we? We don't like it. And Tommy Tandy says the highest level of worship comes from brokenness. The breaking of your heart arrests the ears and eyes of God. And it begins when your love for Him supersedes your fear of what others may think. Your love for Him. I'm so devoted with you, Lord. 
passionate about your purposes. You know, when I was first a new Christian, I wouldn't lift my hands up because I thought everybody's looking at me. Very self-centred. Very self-centred. Thinking, oh, they're all looking. Won't put my hands up. No way. Many, many years it took to put my hands up. Now it's like, who cares? Who cares who's looking at me? I'm worshipping the living God. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Glory, glory to the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, we're going to make sure that, that, that the people in the house of God don't stop us from being passionate, being passionate pursuers of God. And I love David. In 2 Samuel 6.14, it says, Wearing a linen ephod, David was dancing before the Lord with all his might. While he and all Israel were bringing up the ark of the Lord with shouts and sounds of trumpets. As the ark of the Lord was entering the city of David, Michael, daughter of Saul, watched from a window. And when she saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord, she despised him in her heart. Looking out the window, she seen her husband dancing before the Lord, despised him in her, in her heart. And in 2 Samuel 6.20, it says, When David returned home to bless his household, Michael, daughter of Saul, came out to meet him and said, How the king of Israel has distinguished himself today, going around half naked in full view of the slave girls of his servants as any vulgar fellow would. David said to Michael, it was before the Lord who chose me rather than your father or anyone from his house when he appointed me ruler over God's people Israel. I will celebrate before the Lord. I will become even more undignified than this. (coughs) And I will be humiliated in my own eyes. But by these slave girls you spoke of, I will be held in honour. And Michael, daughter of Saul, had no children to the day of her death. And, and I had a look what undignified, because David's saying, I will become even more undignified. And I had a look in the dictionary what the word uh, undignified worship is not concerned about receiving the approval of people, but rather worships in a manner, not exalting self or others, but God alone. Hallelujah. A critical spirit stifles fruitfulness. And I just want to read a few things about criticism. Um, It's in um, Mike Murdoch's book, The Three Most Important Things in Your Life. And criticism, he says, is an attack designed to distract you. Attack is opposition designed to destroy you. Criticism is intended to demolarise you. Attack is intended to demolarise those around you. Anyone desiring to help you, criticism is meant to make your future undesirable. Attack is to make your future unreachable. Critics will oppose your methods. Adversaries Fear your motives. Remember that your attitude is more important than the attack against you. Hallelujah. Let's stand up this morning. Glory, glory to the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, we just love you, Lord. We just love you, Lord Jesus. We've just heard your word this morning. We've heard your word, such encouraging words this morning. Father God, we will not fear the faces of men, just like you spoke to to Jeremiah. Fear not their faces. Father God, your word says they will fight against us, but will not overcome us. For I myself will rescue you, declares the Lord. Hallelujah. Father, you are doing an amazing, awesome work. And we pray, Father God, that today that we will take out, take out that lid off the alabaster box that's still there. We make a decision today. I'm going to release the glory. I'm going to release the glory out of the alabaster box. I choose to take that lid off and allow the glory, the fragrance to come out. Hallelujah. Oh, Father God, we want to be a blessing, a vessel that's going to bring glory, honour and praise unto Your Name in the marketplace, in the secular world, in the, in the workplace, among family, among friends. Father 
God, in this place, Lord, have your way. Let your will be done. Holy Ghost, begin to touch people in this place and on Zoom this morning. Begin to touch the people, Father God. I pray that they will become passionate lovers, passionate lovers of you. Glory to God. And that you will, Lord God, cause that fire to burn. Cause a fire to burn, Lord God, that others will come and they will follow us into the house of God. That they will see that we are passionate, Father God, passionate for your purposes, that you would move mightily, mightily in this hour, Lord God. That you would come and demonstrate your power and your glory this morning, Lord God. You're an amazing God. You're an amazing God. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. And Emma, I just see, I just see as you as you pour out the fragrance out of that alabaster box, as you begin to pour it out, pour it out. Hallelujah. Just see like a sweet smelling fragrance, like an incense that would rise up to the throne of God, pouring it out, pouring it out. And there's many that want to throw a wet blanket over you. Many want to put that fire out that's on the inside. But I just see you rising up. I just see you dancing like David danced. Oh, be Become more undignified than this. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory to the Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. And cheeks, I just see such a boldness on the inside. I just see you're going to break through, break through, break through. Hallelujah. Just see like a heart of discernment, discernment on the inside, a spirit of discernment. God sharpening that discernment on the inside of you. And it's like, I just see God going to give you words of knowledge. He's going to raise you up. Words of knowledge are going to come forth out of your mouth. And you're going to be just amazed with what God is going to bring forth out of your life. You're going to have words for those religious people. Spirits, hallelujah. And they're going to bow their knee to the Lord Jesus Christ. You're going to see sons of glory coming into the Kingdom of God. You're going to be amazed what God is doing in your life. And I just see a God just causing such a humility. It's like you're going to bow low before the living God. You're going to bow low before the living God. Just see God doing amazing, extraordinary things in your life. Hallelujah. And, and you're not going to be short of cash. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. And it's like in Exodus, there's a scripture the more they afflicted you, the more you're going to prosper and you're going to grow. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory, glory to the Lord. Glory, glory to the Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus. Divine, I should just see a ladder. And I just see that ladder. You're running up. You're running up. And I think about Jacob when he's seen the angels. You're running up that ladder. Hallelujah. God's going to cause unprecedented favour. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lord. Hallelujah. And I just see God's going to bless you. It's going to be pressed down, shaken together, running over. Shall man give unto your bosom. And it's like an old song goes, I've got so much, I've got to give it away. Amen. Hallelujah. Yay. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you for coming. Please stay for the barbecue.